start. My name is Petra Sultan. I'm the policy and oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm the advocacy and education director for Thrive. I got a new title. Um, and Thrive is the Alliance of Nonprofits for San Mateo County. And we welcome you here, our Environment and Sustainability Thrive Action Group. Um, today's presentation will be about youth climate action in San Mateo County. We are very excited to host a whole lot of terrific organizations and terrific youth voices. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Thrive before we start. So as I said, Thrive is the Alliance of Nonprofits for San Mateo County. We empower nonprofits to unite their voices and influence, build capacity and form cross-sector partnerships. That all sounds very nice, but let me explain a little bit about what that actually means. So we have a lot of different programs. One of them is this one, which is the Environment and Sustainability Thrive Action Group. In addition, nonprofit capacity building, we match board members um, with nonprofits. We have job fairs for cross-sector collaboration. We have a lot of work with directly with the county. Um, There's a picture of David Canepa, who was one of our speakers. We um, work on vaccine uh, education and with a lot of nonprofit groups, 33 different nonprofit organizations that are spreading the word directly to their communities. And then we do policy and advocacy work on all of these different areas that you see. One of our particular things that we're working on right now is a strategic alliance initiative where we're working with nonprofits to see how COVID has affected them. Because over the last year, it's really taken a toll, not just on our communities, but on the nonprofits that serve our communities. So we're working on figuring out the best ways to support the nonprofit themselves. Um, we'll be releasing a report in June with a lot of analysis and some ideas of how we can all move forward together. And another thing that we're working on, which might be very interesting to people here who are working with schools, is that there's a lot of funding coming down through all the different um, stimulus packages and we want to make sure that that funding goes to the most underserved people in San Mateo County and specifically for the schools, this funding that we would like to go to nonprofit organizations that are working with our youth. So it's another initiative that we're working on. Um, we also do a lot of voter outreach. Sorry, um, again, because this is a youth audience, I wanted to just mention that, that environmentalists, although they tend to be very active in many ways, have a reputation for not actually voting. So everybody who's out there, remember that your vote really counts and especially as an environmental vote. So um, with that, I would like to turn it over to Doug. So I'm gonna introduce him first. Doug Silverstein has been our lead for our environment and sustainability, there you go, since 2018. And he's been fantastic at really creating community. That's a lot of what Thrive does is create community so that we can move conversations forward. And he's specialized in the environment sustainability realm and has done really a fantastic job. And I'm sure this is gonna come up, but he's going to actually be moving out of the country. And so um, this is his last official large event. And I just wanna say that it's been fantastic having him and that Thrive will be absolutely continuing his work um with uh through my leadership so we mm -hmm. appreciate all of the work he's done and i will turn it over to him because he has put together a really fantastic panel of youth thank you petra what a wonderful ride it's been and um i think we've accomplished a lot petra thank you for being my partner in this um can you guys can hear me right petra Yes. Okay. Um, so we've been doing this for three years now, and actually, um, maybe want to challenge you all as I leave to take it to the next level. I think what we've done is we've um, found out what everyone else is up to and collaborated to a, to some extent. But I I do think we can do more. You guys, in my absence, um, can take it to the next level. But let me just say what we've been doing for the last three years is getting together every month, discussing the challenges and solutions of specific topics through the lens of equity. And we, we've picked these cross discipline topics, uh, climate, energy, food, land, transit, waste, and water. And we have brought together business, government, nonprofit, and youth. Um, we've had great success doing this. 
Um, I do want to say, though, that I think we, we all realize we have very large challenges. And I think that um, working, we could work even better together to define the group goals and um, work together in action to achieve big goals. Um, I am, we could talk maybe more about this uh, collegially uh, next month, actually in I think three weeks, 21 days, we're gonna have a in-person meeting for the first time since February, 2020 when we met in Redwood City. So come join this, it'll be fun, 4.30. Um, it's not much of a hike, really a walk around uh, Coyote Point and then we're going to hang out and um, enjoy each other's company. I do want to make sure to thank our sponsors who have um, been with us for a couple of years, um, funding our work and allowing us to convene um, well organized and um, be able to to have these forums. I'll, uh, as we do with every event, I give a little plug for Peninsula Clean Energy. Sometimes they do this presentation, oh, a few slides, but on their behalf, because they're quite busy, they have great community programs. And so I, uh, we make sure that everyone knows about these. Please let your, take advantage of these uh, if you're in San Mateo County and let everyone else know about them. Um, this is driving their, this, they have a platform of clean energy. Now we have to take advantage of plugging into their renewable energy by heating our homes with electric heaters, um, riding around in electric cars and having um, electric backup, not uh, uh, oil generated backup. Um, so here's where I'll be a little reflective. And as I, um, as I depart, I, this is something I really um, uh, took to early when I was researching this topic, which is collective impact, unified goals and actions. And here I'm gonna get on a uh, soapbox a little bit, but um, we have a lot of great organizations on this call. We've had a lot of great organizations speaking for the last couple of years. Um, we don't always work together. We, we're all, um, we all have great goals and we all are, are executing well and making progress. But um, I will say, I really think we need to align organizations or you guys align organizations more, come up with some really big measurable goals across all of us, coordinate our investment in action uh, and have some centralized communication administration. It's not easy, but I think this is what needs to be done. Should it be government led and or funded? I think yes. And so there's a challenge to those in, in in government organizations, should it be focused with measurable goals? Yes, I think we all do need to um, have joint goals and well-funded with solid operations. This is to me how we're going to accomplish um, some big progress. And I have to say that as I read into what um, other countries are doing, that they are much more government-led, they are more well-funded, um, they do set some serious goals. And I think they, you know, quite honestly, do a better job than we are here. And I think that um, is something that we can um, take as a call to action. So I'll, I'll throw the challenge out on the table to you all. We could talk about this a little bit in breakout rooms is to see how we can really work together well and um, align our goals and our action, unified goals and action. So, um, with that, I'll jump into, we've got a lot to talk about today, a lot of great organizations. What I wanna do is um, have three organizations talk and then, and really I need you guys each to keep it to five to seven minutes, please. Um, and then we're gonna have a breakout room. A little bit along the lines of what I just talked about is, you know, if we were to work together, what would we focus on? And then, um, if uh, three, the four more speakers, and then if we were to work together, how would we set and achieve goals? It's somewhat of a workshop. If you want to make, uh, I can make it as informal as you want, but um, I hope that uh, that can lead to some interesting conversation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Josh Kelly and Roshan. 
um, the student leaders at Citizen Climate Lobby San Mateo Youth. And then um, we'll just proceed through. You guys can introduce yourselves and take it away. I've got um, your slides all ready to go. Awesome. Thanks so much, Doug. Um, and first, I'd just really like to thank you for uh, inviting us and letting us talk. It's a great platform. Uh, and I just love what Thrive Alliance has done, and it's been great working with you. Um, so with that, I'm Roisin McElarney, and I am a senior at Aragon High School, uh, and I work with the San Mateo Youth Chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. I'm Kelly Chan. I'm also a senior at Aragon High School. And I'm Josh. I'm also at Aragon High School. Uh, next slide. So a little bit about our organization. We are 100% youth-led. Um, we have one responsible adult among us, Elaine Salinger. <laughs> you might know her. Um, sorry. Uh, she communicates with the adult branch of CCL <laughs> and... <laughs> Josh, can you do this? I'm sorry. Yeah, and um, yeah, so we're all um, college or high school students um, and we actually we're looking to also expand maybe to middle school. Um, but yeah, we're 100% uh, student led and we're looking to empower students to get involved in government, uh, specifically for climate action. And uh, that's a picture of our lobby meeting back in August of last year um, with Jackie Spear, who is our uh, representative in Congress. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, recently we've been speaking at city halls for reach codes. Um, we've been phone banking um, in the 2020 election for EVP and other organizations. And we've been writing to members of Congress. And like I just mentioned, we've also been lobbying um, over Zoom, not in person, um, with our representative, Jackie Spear. And um, hopefully coming up, we have a climate demonstration, hopefully when COVID all that situation clears up, we can um, use that demonstration to build up more energy around uh, climate action. And uh, Roisin will tell you a bit more about that in detail. Next slide. Um, so one of the big projects that we've been really excited about recently is a demonstration for carbon fee and dividends. Uh, last year, we were lobbying Jackie Spear um, and she was so enthusiastic about our policy um, and she was really helpful in you know, helping us reach our goals. And she agreed that she would give a speech uh, at a demonstration if we planned one. So that's what we've been doing, you know, trying to wade through the red, red tape of COVID restrictions. Uh, and we finally managed to put something together. Um, so on August 7th at, from two to 5 p.m., we're gonna be holding a demonstration. We're, wa we're walking from the San Mateo City Hall uh, to Central Park where we'll have youth speakers um, some tabling from different organizations, um, music. It's going to be a fun time, uh, and I highly suggest that you guys attend. Um, so next slide, please, so I can show the itinerary. Oh, sorry, this is um, a poster for promotional things if you guys want to send that out later. Um, so these are all the activities we have planned. Uh, Jackie Spear is our keynote speaker, but we actually have several speakers planned for the demonstration, um, including Josh Becker, who's a state senator, and Rich, Rick Vanilla, who is a member of our San Mateo City Council, and Dave Pine, who works for the city of San Mateo. We also have three different student speakers, uh, Claudia Nolasco, who is from our very own Citizens Climate Lobby chapter, um, and two positions that are, we're currently looking to fill. So if you're actually interested in speaking at this event, this is a great opportunity uh, to get started. Uh, we're also gonna have fun activities like uh, chalk art, dancing breaks, um, trying to get, you know, the feel of a traditional demonstration. We, you know, we do have some restrictions because we're trying to stay safe with COVID. Uh, we have to use a bubble machine, no blowing bubbles because that's very dangerous these days. Um, but it's, it's gonna be a fun event and I hope we'll see some of you guys there. Um, and if you'd, like to, if you'd like to table at this event um, and have your organization there handing out material to recruit people, uh, this is perfect because, you know, this is your target audience. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so if our organization appeals to you and this is the sort of thing that you think uh, you'd be interested in doing, uh, you can start with a few actions that we have new members take, uh, like contacting your member of Congress and asking them um, about the environmental issues that they support and just telling them that you care about the environment. Um, 
is, is a really good first step. And it's really easy. It's surprising how easy it was. It's like a two second email. It doesn't have to be formal because they literally just check a box um, with what topic that you, the constituent, are concerned about. Um, if you're also interested in tabling at our event, uh, you can contact me. Um, that's my email address. Or if you're interested in joining our meetings, which are every Saturday from 11 to 12. Um, so thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing while I go forward in the presentation because I need to get to um, Energize Colleges, which is right here. Is this right? Yes. Take it away, Catherine. Awesome, thanks so much, Doug. So I'll just give a quick um, disclaimer. I don't think we'll be able to surpass that presentation just to be fully honest. So um, Landon, Abdel, and I are from the San Mateo County Community College District. And we're here to present everybody about the Energized Colleges program. So um, please feel free to jump over to the next slide. All right, so what is Energized Colleges? So we at the SMCCD district are a branch of the broader overall Energized Colleges program, which is started by um, Strategic Energy Innovations in 2016. So um, moving from like the middle and high school level to college, um, this really is infusing opportunities for workforce and curriculum development at college campuses. Um, so for the last four years, um, Energized Colleges has partnered with 15 campuses from all over California um, to provide different types of sustainability and energy oriented internships to give students hands on um, working and um, career development experience through paid internships. Um, so we have partnered with a lot of different organizations, both within SMCCD and within the community. And we'll, that will be the focus of our presentation today. Um, but just to be clear, um, other components of having an energized colleges program at a college that you go to, whether um, you know that's in your future or you're in the vicinity of one, um, this includes um, different types of internships and curriculum development opportunities and the Energized Colleges website there provides more information about that. So feel free to jump to the next slide. Yeah, um, hi everyone. So I'm, I'm Landon Smith. I am the Energized Colleges program coordinator at Skyline College. Uh, and so we're gonna kind of give you a little bit of a, a sense of what it looks like within our district as the district office uh, where Catherine's based and myself at Skyline College do the program in a slightly different manner for each one, um, but both are extremely effective and have been really, really impactful. Uh, so the Energized Colleges program, actually, Catherine, I think we've been around for five or six years now. Um, I was looking through some notes, but yeah, it's been around for a while, honestly. I, don't keep, I can't keep track of it as much, but it's been amazing. Uh, we've managed to reach around 300 student internships, uh, if not more at this point, because these numbers were from pre-COVID. We have had some faculty consults and new course programs, uh, about 36 or so. You can see them on the website at theenergizedcolleges.com. Uh, around 12,000, if not more, again, meaningful connections between interns and high schoolers. And so we really aim to utilize our internship program to further engage and further develop a, a sustainability career and sustainability oriented workforce. And lastly, through some pre and post surveys that we do with our internship program, uh, we feel that or we've received the response actually that 87% uh, of our interns feel prepared for a job in energy and at this point sustainability as we've expanded sort of our, our breadth of project type uh, for within those fields upon the completion of their program and so they're ranging as Catherine mentioned from middle college uh, high school as well as um, community college students who engage in this program and so we cover a wide range of students but also really serve a, a huge community within that program. Uh, next slide please. So just kind of an overview of what it looks like at SMCCD and specifically with Skyline as well as we're part of that. But the interns do about 75 hour internship within the college and it reaches from students across the SF Peninsula and it's led by Climate Corps fellows like myself and Catherine, which is also another program of strategic energy innovations for um, post back, post back uh students who are looking to really get that jump start on their sustainability careers, uh, especially early on after graduating. We partner with stakeholder and site projects to give these students early opportunities to further develop their resume and gain professional experience. We want them to, to get an opportunity to engage 
closely with the work that's being done and feel like they're really a part of the sustainability world, part of this energy focus, um, and really that their projects aren't just standalone, but they're making a huge impact for whatever community they're working for or serving. We also want to support local sustainability projects while providing the students experience in the industry. And lastly, we want to further develop sustainability competencies, uh, spread the education and the, the knowledge beyond just sort of the realm that we're focused in really reach those students early on so they can infuse it in their academics and their career pursuits. Uh, we're also providing a source of income, especially during school. It's not as always, uh, not as always ideal to get work, um, especially stuff that is so impactful like this. And so it provides students with an opportunity for income and uh, great work experience early on in their, in their uh, careers. And I, Jamie, I see your question. It's actually not. So this is just for SMCCCD. There's programs across the Bay Area, such as Berkeley, um, San Jose, City College, just to name a few, I believe up, possibly up north as well. But yeah, it's not just San Mateo County. Um, that's just where we're based. And that's, I believe, where the project has had most of its roots is we've been really closely tied to um, strategic energy innovations and the work that they do. Uh, next slide, please. And so to talk a little bit about specifically Skyline, which is where I'm based, uh, we're in our fifth year with SEI. And it originally began as a pg e grant, which is often how this program starts. Usually you find a partner to sort of help support the, the initial cost, which can be a little steep. But as Skyline has done and sort of with this intent of allowing the host organization to eventually take over the funding, which as a result expands the breadth of the project. And so as I mentioned before in the pre and post surveys, they talk a lot about um, the career readiness and energy field, this is where it expands beyond that and just the overarching sustainability. And so Skyline has had the great opportunity of taking over the grant and actually expanding it into, so we host a student-led podcast. We have students doing um, operations assessment and sustainable procurement. We have some focused on transportation with equity and accessibility for students to further just increase um, our campus support for our students. And so it really has allowed us to expand beyond the energy focus, which has made the projects more impactful and more effective for the community as a whole. Uh, and then additionally, Skyline really has this intent of being using the campus as a living lab. We want to make sure that our students get that hands-on engagement and experience within the campus field and that they're, again, their projects make an impact. They feel like what they're doing isn't just standalone, but they can see the progress and see the results down the road. And again, as I mentioned before, the projects have a direct impact on Skyline, but also in the San Bruno community. Some of them are able to go into the larger community that we serve and take a role, take a role in sort of further advancing some of the sustainability goals. Uh, like we see in this picture here is actually one that fused a couple projects, but we had a student who was doing waste focus. And so she basically went into a psychology course. She was learning about waste and sort of the psychology behind waste and how we dispose of our waste and really walk them through uh, a waste audit of what it is that we produce at Skyline and better understanding the systems within the community that they're a part of. And so it really gives us a chance again to, to drive that engagement with our student body and with the communities that we serve. Um, the next slide, please. Yeah, so that was for the Skyline Energized Colleges program, and I'm in charge of the District Energized Colleges program. So I'm based at the district office, and we serve students from all three campuses, from Skyline College, College of San Mateo, um, and Kenyatta College. So that's the, the first main difference between um, these two programs. And in addition, most of our District Energized Colleges program has actually been operating when the pandemic was in place. Um, so we were established last year with a grant from Penins uh, sorry, pg and &E, and we're fortunate enough to receive a grant from Peninsula Clean Energy this year to continue this program. Um, so over the course of the last two years, we've partnered with different local community organizations across San Mateo County um, to see like what are projects that students can help with in their local communities to gain that workforce experience, um, get paid doing that. Um, and support local resilience and climate um, climate resilience projects in the process. So uh, I think it's a really great opportunity, like whether you're a local community organization who might be short or need additional personnel to support your project, we've got you. And if you're a student um, and maybe, you know, interested in seeing like, how does like my career, um, you know, look like or what does it look like to have a sustainability career these are really great uh, short bite-sized pieces to experience exactly that type um, of work uh, 
experience essentially so um, we partner with different organizations on different projects related to decarbonization electrification and clean energy to really both give students that experience and diversify um, the number of people with this um, energy career knowledge um, as they move through their college careers so it really is kind of a win-win-win situation and so we're always open to um, more partners who are interested in um, providing projects and collaborating with us through our program so um, feel free to contact me that will be available later on in our presentation. And then if you're a student or you're going to be at SMCD over the next couple of years, um, we are open for um, recruiting and applications um, during the next um, school cycle. So this is open. You do not have to be like a specific major to be part of this program. So it really is kind of an open for all opportunity to um, support our students and our local um, climate resilience projects within the community. So. We actually have one of our interns with us today, so um, he'd like to talk a little bit about his project as well as how you can be involved. So um, please switch to the next slide and Abdel, take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Abdel Zaro. I'm an intern at Actera through Energized Colleges. And while making public comments at energy committee meetings, I noticed that having different voices speak in favor of a policy makes a, um, a big impact. So I'm working on starting a low time commitment program to allow high schoolers to participate and speak at these meetings and which is which is important because like like i mentioned it's the policies i mean sorry public comments have like the ability to make a big impact on which policies actually move forward and um at the same at the same time um it's also just a great opportunity for students to hone their communication skills so um yeah if you're interested feel free to reach out to me You can also switch over to the next slide. So we have the Energized Colleges website and as well as all three of our contact information there. So whether you're interested in asking about like internships or partnering for a future, um, hosting an intern in the future or asking Abdel about his project, um, feel free to contact and reach out to any one of us. I think there's a lot of really great synergy um, with the other group that are presenting here. So um, that's all for our presentation today. We're happy to answer any questions in the breakout rooms or later on. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. I do want to quickly jump in just to address Jamie's comment that I saw. Um, just keep an eye out at your school. The, the posters often go up at the beginning of fall semester or sometimes in the spring. Um, just keep an eye open. Uh, that's usually what happens is we develop the internships throughout the beginning of the cycle and then post them. So you'll find them usually at the beginning or midway point of any academics uh, year. Great. And we will um, put uh, all the contact info in an email after the uh, this event. We'll send that out probably next Monday or Tuesday. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm a Skyline and Kenyatta College uh, student, no degree, but um, great classes there. So from with that, we're gonna move to Vanessa to talk about Bake Hats. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa Teo. I'm a senior at Burlingame High School and I am one of the founders and president while we're transitioning now that I'm graduating of the Bay Area Youth Climate Action Team, otherwise known as Bay Cats. So we're very much centered in San Mateo County. We have students, high school students within the uh, San Mateo Union High School District and Sequoia uh, Union High School District too. And we're currently branching out even to Silicon Valley with students and middle school students in San Jose, Santa Clara and Los Altos. Um, we have two Sierra Club mentors. Gladwin D'Souza, who is um, the Conservation Committee Chair of the Sierra Club Loma Prieta Chapter, and Su Chao, who is on the Executive Committee for the Sierra Club Loma Prieta Chapter 2. Uh, slide, please. So our mission at Baycats is to empower youth across San Mateo County and Silicon Valley. And our main goal is to spread awareness um, and to combat climate change by educating all generations about current environmental issues and taking action against them. Slide. So here's a list of what we're doing um, and what we have done. So most recently we hosted an Earth Day webinar on April 24th and it was about env pressing environmental issues. And so we had four key speakers. Um, we had Glavin D'Souza who talked about broadband for all um, we had James Coleman talk about divestment, Mary Buxton on the 30 by 30 executive order, and Doug to talk about um, single-use plastic and foodware ordinances. Um, we had 
our audience peaked at around 150, which was quite a lot and a big reach for us. And it's really good and important to carry on with environmental education, which is something that Bay Cats really highlights. And we've been heavily involved in a single use plastic foodware ban. We have students who are working with um, circular reusables, SMC, um, to help um, promote and get a plastic foodware ban ordinance out. And we speak a lot at city council meetings. Uh, we have a Salamanders and Newts campaign down in San Jose, which is currently being headed by some middle school students. And we're passionate about having a mentorship program for people who are new to environmental education. So that could be for middle school students or even for high school students who are interested in getting involved. Um, we have helped lobby and endorse for Nancy Radcliffe down in Redwood City. And overall, we always have educational components at our meetings. Um, recently, we have also dived into new initiatives with trying to help protect monarch butter butterflies. And also, we've gotten a lot more involved with divestment. Uh, slide, please. So with that, we're very active on our social media, on Instagram and Twitter, and we recently dropped a podcast. And so um, it's on most podcast um, applications with like Apple Podcasts too. It's on Spotify and it's on our website, which is baycats.org. It's pretty informational. Like uh, we have a lot of educational content on our social media and we talked a lot about our um, webinar. Uh, slide, please. So that's pretty much it. And that's what Baycats is doing. Um, we're still trying to expand as a group since we are fairly new. We started it um, in the beginning of quarantine, pretty much. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or you can contact me or DM our social media. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you everyone. Okay, thank you. So um, in a second, we're gonna go into breakout rooms, but um, I want to, um, you're welcome to ask any of the speakers who've speak, spoken so far uh, what we could, they, you know, any questions, but I also want to throw something out and that is um, if we were to do collective impact, what would we focus on? So, um, you know, I've been doing these meetings for, for three years now, lots of great, amazing people out there and amazing um, initiatives and good progress. I, I still feel like we need to work better together. I say we, but um, you all know that I'm leaving. Uh, how how is it that we don't set bigger goals? Uh, I'll throw that out. How is it that um, when I read about other cities and and uh, districts and countries in other areas of the world, namely Europe, they're setting very specific larger goals, and I see that they're mainly government led, and maybe that's because. Um, some of the civic uh, leaders in our, our the youth and or nonprofit leaders move into government and lead these. But I just asked myself, why don't we say as a, as a big community, as a county, for example, in waste, lower the amount of plastic waste by 15% by 2025. Why is it we can't um, align ourselves and do something like that instead of all working on this a solution separately. So if we did, what would we focus on? I mean, there's obviously a lot of challenges that we have. So should we do them all or, sh or could we focus and who might, uh, in the next breakout room, who might lead that? So I'm just going to randomly put us into three break breakout rooms and Feel I'm gonna join. Petra and I are gonna have be in separate ones. Um, please, we'll bounce around. But please ask uh, a question of the speaker, and then um, let's ask ourselves: Could we be setting a group goal that, that's measurable um, and attainable? And um, how would what goal might that be? Okay, and I'll well I'll give it seven eight minutes or so. Assign automatically.
Okay. And I'm not in any room. How do I close them all? I want to close all the breakout rooms. 40 seconds. Okay, I guess we've got 40 seconds left. We're all, this room is in, I'm a rookie at closing breakout rooms. <laughs> yeah, um, should, could we get more? What is getting mad? Um, add to our cause. Yeah. Seven seconds. Okay. Thanks everyone. Hope you guys had a good conversation. Okay, let's move back into um, the next set of speakers. And we are going to, I'll start with um, Actera then. Let me share the screen. Okay, Kendall. Awesome, thank you, Doug. Can everyone hear me? I'm gonna change my view so I can see more people. There we go. Um, well, hi everyone. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Kendall Post and I am currently a Climate Corps Fellow with Actera working on our newly launched Youth Be the Change program. Um, my email is there if you would like to contact me afterwards and I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, one thing I do want to mention is I'm very fortunate to have gotten my second COVID vaccine yesterday, but my energy level is a little bit lower than usual. So please bear with me, but I'm still very excited to be here with you all. Um, next slide, please. So first, just an overview of Actera. If some of you are not familiar with the organization, Actera is a 501c3 nonprofit that is located in Palo Alto, but serves the larger Bay Area. And it's one of the first um, hallmark environmental organizations that was founded in the Bay Area following the first Earth Day in um, 1969. And Actera's mission is to bring people together to create local solutions for a healthy planet. So addressing some of the questions that Doug has posed to us as a group, Actera really believes that it starts with making change within our local communities and showing what's possible. And then that can be scaled to global change. Um, I listed here a couple of the different programs that we run um, with beneficial electrification, transportation innovation, food sustainability, sustainable business practices, and just generally engaging and empowering with our local communities. And in the slides I linked, um, if you are interested in volunteering both high schoolers or adults with any of our programs, we'd love to have you join. One thing that I do need to plug really quickly is one thing we've been working on recently is helping residents and businesses prepare for a time of use rate changes and reducing your energy usage between the hours of 4 and 9 p.m., something we're trying to just spread the word about generally. Next slide. 
Okay, so specifically Youth Be the Change is the program that I've been working on since November. And this is a climate change education program focused for middle schoolers, but also open to high schoolers who are interested. And it is six sessions that are about two hours each that the intention of the program is to just start creating basic climate knowledge when it comes to the science of climate change, climate effects both here in the Bay Area, specifically in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, but also on a global scale, and then going into climate change solutions. Um, currently, we've been offering the Youth Be the Change program 100% virtually through Google Classrooms that we created, but we are planning on launching some hybrid summer sessions in late July and early August, that will be more of a summer camp um, format and then looking to do more formal partnerships with schools and school districts um, moving into the fall. Next slide, please. Um, so I listed three main ways that youth can get involved with Youth Be The Change. The first is if you're just interested in starting to build basic climate knowledge, we'd love to have you sign up for the Youth Be The Change program. If you go to our website, it's really easy. There's just a sign up button with a Google form to fill out. Um, if you're interested and available at the end of this summer, our Youth Be The Change summer sessions will be available for rising seventh, eighth and ninth graders. And then if you're a high schooler on this call that already has some experience leading climate action in your community, we would love to connect with you, have you either volunteer with ACTERA or serve as a mentor for some of the middle schoolers that are just getting their feet wet in climate action to help mentor them on what um, youth engagement on this topic could look like. So my um, email, another email that goes to me is listed there as well as ACTERA's social media and our Youth Be The Change website. And yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sorry for bouncing around. We had a last minute change in order, but um, we will go to, let's make sure I'm doing this right. The final two groups, which is Woodside and then uh, Office of Sustainability. Let's share the screen. Here we go. So with that, Alton, why don't you take it away? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Alton Lee, and um, I am a teacher in the Green Academy at Woodside High School. Ooh, this is actually an older version of the slide deck. Um, if you can, um, Doug, is it okay for me to share my screen at this point? Because I made sure. changes to the slides. Sorry about yeah. that. Oh. I will. Yep, no problem here. I'm going to help you share. Maybe work um, easier that way. I'll just make a co-host. Oh, thank you. All right. Promise I'll go fast. Um, once again, my apologies for that. My name is Alton Lee. I teach within the group Woodside High School Green Academy. And actually, um, I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing some of our partners in the room, um, one of which is speaking actually next. Um, so um, a quick a little bit of context. Um, we are housed out of Woodside High School, which is um, at the border of the town of Woodside and Redwood City. And um, the Woodside Green Academy is designated as a California Partnership Academy. And what that means is it's a school within a school type of system um, where we engage students for three years. Um, where and where oftentimes at the high school level, um, students would get involved with environmental sustainability issues through a club or maybe an AP environmental science class. Um, we are engaging students starting in 10th grade and essentially having that involvement be a significant part of their school day. Um, we bring in about 30 to 40 students per year and we have them take their core classes with us. Um, and those classes are infused um, with an environmental lens. Um, as well, we have very specific um, classes that are within the Green Academy that is essentially a long introduction to different issues of sustainability. Um, within our program, um, we have eight Academy teachers, um, one English, two social studies, and five teachers who teach science or the career technical education aspects um, of our program. So 
usually students would come in um, hearing about how, oh, the Green Academy is about field trips. It's about working in the garden. Actually, this is our garden right here um, with our raised beds. Um, we've got our chickens kind of a little bit downhill from what you're seeing here. We've got four chickens at the moment. Trust me, you'll see them later. Um, they hear about that and, and they hear about the field trips that we bring them to and that's what draws them in. And their environmental literacy is relatively nascent. If really, they don't really think of themselves as environmentalists at all. And after three years of really, you know, um, an intentional introduction to different aspects of sustainability, as well as um, a mentorship component, um, a lot of them actually graduate seeing themselves as people who can speak up about environmental issues. In fact, one of our seniors is actually on this call right now, and I'm gonna actually embarrass her not saying her name. Um, when I taught her her sophomore year, she was super, super quiet, really didn't say anything. And at this point, you know, she is one of our quiet still, but really one of our, you know, more, how do I say this? Um, more kind of grounded advocates um, for environmental issues. Um, she's really taken that to heart. Um, so that's kind of the power of, you know, instead of just one club for three years or one class that they take, you know, over the course of a year um, of a program that, that's like this. Um, our three courses include plant and soil science where they are working in the garden. That's the class that they take in their sophomore year as part of the three-year um, pathway. Um, the second year focuses on water issues in California and um, elsewhere. And that's where the mentor program is also involved, it, it infused in there, as well as there is a bike repair um, option um, that, that where students will take a little bit of time to learn how to repair bikes. And our third year um, course is about sustainable design. Here are some here are some of our courses in in um, in pictures here. Again, this is our garden here. You saw the raised beds. These are three chickens. Um, unfortunately, one of them um, was victim to a coyote or some other um, predator. But now we're up to four actually. And then we actually have some bee boxes here within our garden as well. Um, that's what students are involved in in their tenth grade year. In their eleventh grade year, that's an in Again, an in-depth introduction to water issues. This is Stolsaf Creek that is about a mile away from Woodside High School where um, students would go and do some water sampling. And this is where um, Zoe, who is part of the Office of Sustainability, that's where our partnership began. Um, as well as this model on the side here where you see the spray bottle there, that's a um, watershed model. Also um, part of the curriculum that Zoe and I um, you know, kind of collaborated to deliver um, with students. And then you see a you see a bunch of kids in water. Yes, we went up to the Yuba River um, to as a rafting trip so that kids can see um, you know, the life cycle of salmon. And then at the bottom left hand corner where you've got the whole a, a few um, pink vests there, that's a tour of the wastewater treatment plant there. So lots of partners, some of which are in this room right now. And um, our challenge of course is to find many more partners so that students can see their uh, a place for them um, within the sustainability realm. So the way that you can get involved with us is if you see yourself as wanting to get involved with students in a more sustained way where essentially we have a captive audience, come talk to us. Um, and we look forward to working with you and continuing to working with um, the folks who are um, in the room that we already work with. All right, thank you. Do I, um, I'm gonna grab the screen back from you and go to the final two speakers. And that's the Office of Education and that's Sonia. And then lastly, will be Zoe with the Office of Sustainability. Enlarge this. Thank you, all. Thank you, Alton. Great program. I wish that we're open to other schools, but uh, congratulations. And Anne, I believe, is on the call for making that program happen. 
Sonia. Thank you so much, Doug. And yes, that was so great to hear everyone's presentation so far, really inspiring. Um, and I'm excited to be here with you all today. Um, so my name is Sonia and I'm a Climate Corps AmeriCorps Fellow at the San Mateo County Office of Education. And I work with the Environmental Literacy and Sustainability Initiative, which is ELSI, um, and also Safe First to School. So today I'm gonna be sharing about ELSI's Environmental Youth Leadership Network, which is also called EYLN. <laughs> um, thank you, perfect. So, okay, before we jump into EYLN and LC, um, just uh, some quick background information. So who does LC and um, SMC we serve? SMC we serves 171 public schools and 102 private schools in the county. Um, so that adds up to hundreds of thousands of stakeholders from teachers to students. Um, and 23% of students in the county are English language learners and 32% re receive free, free and reduced price lunches. So um, SMCOE, SMCOE serves uh, the diverse population that is San Mateo County. Um, yeah, so that's some background on SMCOE and who Elsie lives within SMCOE. So um, I'm curious who in the room has heard of um, Elsie before, heard of this initiative? Yeah, I see some hands if you want to like, give a virtual reaction or put your hand up. Cool. Okay, that's exciting. So um, yeah, the Environmental Literacy and Sustainability, Sustainability Initiative um, is housed within SMCOE and it launched in 2017. So Elsie's goal is to provide backbone support to schools to prioritize and integrate environmental literacy, as many of you know, <laughs> um, and also prioritize sustainability, climate resiliency, and climate justice. Um, so this is done through this kind of specific framework that engages every stakeholder and uses a whole school sustainability integration model. So that means um, including campus curriculum, community, and culture. And then on the next slide, I have like a graphic of that <laughs> for a more visual um, version. If you want to go to the next slide, thank you. Yeah, so there's the, um, this is the graphic of this model that Elsie uses. Um, and it's also the base for EYLN network. So, um, next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we've talked about LC, SMCE, but what is UILN? So, the Environmental Youth um, Leadership Network is basically LC's way to support youth networking around the county. So, um, EYLN is for any student, climate leaders, um, youth climate ambassadors, um, environmental science students, earth club leaders, earth club um, team members, basically any self-identified leader or person who is a student in San Mateo County and wants to make connections and take action. So um, this is kind of what's special about EYLN is that it's open to every single student within the county and there's no application process. You can join this network of change makers and gain access to the sport that it entails. Um, so some examples of EYLN is um, we offer things like a newsletter that shares what's kind of going on in the county and ways to get involved um, that are specific to youth and also features change agents. So like a lot of the people on the call today could be like a feature in, um, in one of our newsletters. And then that would be another way for youth to meet other youth and get, and get um, this like collaboration that Doug has been talking about going. Um, we also host a bi-yearly summit, uh, the EYLN summit, and um, provide technical assistance to any student. So those are just some of the things that EYLN entails joining this network. Um, so basically, um, I'll, yeah, um, <laughs> this is a network for students to choose to engage with in any way um, that's best for them. So like if students want to attend a summit and meet fellow leaders and learn about what's happening in the county, to take collective action, that's an option, joining the newsletter and reading up on opportunities. And then the technical assistance piece is um, where we personalize um, the needs of the student. So if a student wants to pass a board resolution for a climate emergency, we will help them do that in any way that they need. Um, if a student wants to um, make plans for a garden at their school site with uh, working with their school facilities and principal, we can help them do that. So that's what EYLN is in general. Um, and the two photos on this slide are from um, EYLN summits to give kind of more 
info on what that is. Um, so the first photo, the photo below is from a summit be before um, the current global pandemic. And um, so it kind of shows this collaborative, collaborative space where students are working together. And the above photo is from our most recent summit. And it was a virtual summit on Zoom and it centered on collective action for Earth Week and um, featured a lot of great leaders within the county. <laughs> All right, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so I just talked a lot about <laughs> what UILN does. Um, and if it sounds like something that could support you or could support someone that you know, um, there's lots of ways to get involved from joining our newsletter, which I have the link if you want to sign up right here. And I'll put it in the chat. Um, there's a link to sign up for the newsletter. If you wanna visit our website for more information, I'll also put that in the chat. Um, and feel free to contact us. The email on the bottom is a really great place to contact us for specific technical assistance that you may need um, within the network. And finally, be on the lookout for EYLN's Fall Summit, uh, which is gonna be in early September and centered around the youth climate movement and taking action. Um, and we're gonna give updates on specific dates. So make sure to keep updated on our newsletter and website and we'll get everyone posted. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, I just wanna say thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Doug and Petra and Thrive Alliance. Um, thank you leaders and change makers and fellow presenters. I really appreciate your time. Feel free to reach out. I'll put my email and Elsie's email in the chat. Thank you, Sonia. And um, your leader has been a great leader in the county too, Andrea Yacoe, and I've been involved and met her probably three years ago and um, spoken at a few of your events, your summits along the way and had many conver good conversations with your office. So thanks to you and your office and all that you guys do and for everyone out. And, and finally, um, the, the, another government leader in our county is the Office of Sustainability, which Zoe is going to talk about the Youth Climate Ambassadors Leadership Program, which also involves the Office of Sustainability, as well as Mike McCord's uh, group, which has uh, been involved in the Citizens Environmental Council of Burlingame. So um, Zoe, thanks for sharing with us. Why don't you yeah, jump in? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to say it's been really awesome to hear all the different programs um, that each one of you offer to different, um, you know, youth across our county. I think it's really um, inspiring to see, and I'm really looking forward to opportunities for us to collaborate. Um, so anyways, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Zoe Van Dievenboot, and I work for the San Mateo County Office of Sustainability. Um, and within the Office of Sustainability, I run our Youth Climate Ambassadors Program. Next slide. Um, I guess well, this is an older version, but that's okay. So just a little bit about the Office of Sustainability. Um, what we do in my office is we really work towards making our county more sustainable and making it an as sustainable as possible community as we can, while also reducing um, the impacts of climate change. So we work on things like energy, uh, making sure that the energy that we um, use is from re renewable sources and does not emit greenhouse gases. Um, we also work on ways to increase access to environmentally friendly modes of transportation. So like walking, biking, taking the bus and really trying to make that accessible to everyone that lives in our county, as well as reducing the amount of waste that we generate and that goes to the landfill. Um, and within a lot of those buckets, um, we're focusing on how do we make sure that we are um, building youth leaders in all of these spaces related to sustainability? How do we create pathways for young folks to enter into the job market related to climate change, energy, um, transportation, all of these things? And so that's kind of where the Youth Climate Ambassadors program comes in. Next slide. Um, and like Doug said, I do not run this program alone. So before I like get into the details of what the program is, I just wanna give a huge shout out to all the YCA partners, including Peninsula Clean Energy, who are some of our funders, um, Office of Education, um, who will really help us with our curriculum and our great partners, and also Citizens Environmental Council, who really started this um, program before us. Um, and then we all came together and decided to provide this program for um, students across the county. So thanks, Sonia. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you. 
Next slide, please. Awesome. So a little bit of an overview of the program. Um, Youth Climate Ambassadors is a year long program for ninth through 11th grade students in San Mateo County. And it's really focused on building awareness, increasing knowledge, creating networks, providing mentorship, as well as strengthening youth capacity to take action on climate change within their school or within their community. Um, so within this program throughout the year, youth participants attend monthly workshops and also have the opportunity to develop and implement an action plan that is designed around a local problem um, that they've identified. Um, and so the key pieces of this program is really, as I said, building knowledge. So making sure that we're providing students with um, all of the information related to climate change and sustainability and really laying out like the, the gravity of what um, state we're in and, and how humans have gotten us here. Um, and then, you know, from there we provide different um, solutions to a lot of the problems that are laid out while also building the skills of youth. So helping them, you know, identify different careers in the environmental sector, build up skills that they could put on their resume. Um, also thinking about like, who they wanna be as a leader, what are skills and leadership styles that are important to them that they really value um, and really help tailor the program to meet the needs of, of who they wanna be when they're older um, and, and how they wanna be and show up as a climate leader. Um, and then from there, we take all of the knowledge building, we take all of the skill building and we combine it into um, a community impact project. So they go out, they find uh, a sustain, unsustainable, um, aspect of their community, of their school, and really dig in to try to come up with sustainable solutions. And this is something that I love about the program. What I think is like the coolest part is just being able to do something about it. You know, being able to be the person who is a solutionary, who is taking action on a problem that they see firsthand. And whether that's a success or whether it's not a success, it's all a success in our eyes because they're doing something about it. And it's a really wonderful way to, to learn. Um, I'm somebody that like learns from doing, so it's really great to see this program being able to provide students with that opportunity. Next slide. Um, so these are some of the topics that we cover um, in our knowledge building phase. So everything from energy, transportation, waste and consumption, um, local and sustainable foods, as well as water. Um, and within these topics, we interlace um, different um, different lenses. So that includes, you know, racial equity and social justice, biodiversity, um, health and happiness, community and culture. So we're really wanting to make connections of like, humans have an impact on our environment and our health and our well being. And there are um, injustices that have occurred um, because of climate change and because of existing systems. Next slide. Then after gaining all of that knowledge and really seeing the intersectionality of climate change and sustainable problem or like sustainability issues, um, students go out and they work on identifying problems and coming up with solutions. So this slide here shows um, the outcomes of our 2020 cohort. Um, all of these different buckets are the different projects that our youth focused on. So a lot of them were focused on waste and water and biodiversity. Um, and overall, we had 27 different community impact projects. Next slide, please. Um, this is just a lovely slide of a bunch of different participants from our 2020 program, um, as well as um, pictures from their community impact project. Um, so just to share some, some example projects that came out of last year, um, one was a native habitat restoration project um, in Half Moon Bay. Some students um, installed veggie gardens at local elementary schools and taught classes to the students there. Others installed a rain barrel on their school campus, which feeds into their school garden. There was a lot of um, education and awareness events um, around waste and water usage, food. Um, we also, or another group ran like a countywide art contest with prizes um, and one even created a really cool documentary. Um, so that's just like a kind of sample of, of the diverse projects that came out of last year. And there was a lot more. Next slide, please. So as I said before, this program is a year long. So we're currently in the middle of our 2021 um, program. 
and it's been really exciting. Um, if you are interested in being a part of this program and you are in high school, um, our applications are open for 2022 starting in October of this year. So the best way for you to, to stay engaged with the, um, the process and um, being updated when the application will um, go out, I have a link for our website, which you can go to, um, which is I put in the chat box, um, as well as the LC newsletter, which I'll put another link to the chat box. We, um, you know, SMCOE is a partner of ours, so we make sure to share with everybody through that newsletter um, when the applications are open. And also feel free to follow um, Office of Sustainability on Instagram at Sustain SMC. We post a lot of updates there as well. Next slide. And I just want to do a quick shout out. Um, we do have an upcoming event um, that is on, oh, this is, yeah, on June 10th. Um, and this is a really cool opportunity, especially for anybody who is interested in climate change and the emotions that come from the climate crisis that we're in. This is a really great way to kind of create community and heal around climate change and how it impacts the things that we love. Um, and also being able to um, work together to process some of these emotions. So if you're interested in learning more about what I just shared, learning how to use the climate ribbon in your community group um, and or in your classroom, whatever it might be, we actually have the artists who will be leading a session for community leaders. You could be you know, a student, you can be in college, you can be retired, anybody is welcome. Um, let me put the link in the chat if you're interested. I'm really excited about this. Um, so anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I will put my email also in the chat. And I think that is all. And I probably went over my time. So I'm really sorry, Doug. That's fine. It's perfect. Um, I'm going to jump us. in for a second before, before Doug goes, because everybody's putting lots of great links in the chat. And I don't want anybody to be worried that they're going to lose them. So one of the things that Thrive really prides itself on is that their whole point is to be a place where we connect. So we are going to send out all of these links and all of the contact information in a follow-up email early next week. We'll also have it on our website under environment and sustainability because we really want all of you to connect. You've been an amazing panel of speakers and I've seen both in the chat and, and in our breakout rooms, some fantastic connections made and we wanna make sure that those continue. Thank you, Petra. And there's there's a handful of other organizations that um, we just couldn't fit everyone in. There's a there's a number of high schools that have specific clubs, um, but but seven of you you it's uh, so recapping, um, two were specific to school. That's Woodside High School's Green Academy and the Energized Colleges program, but um, with the two community colleges or the three community colleges. But if I understand correctly, all these other programs, the Office of Education, the Office of Sustainability, Actera, Baycats, and CCCL, CCL San Mateo Youth are all open, those five organizations, to anyone in our community. So I think um, there's, there's a lot of capacity here, which is great. Um, I think what, what I'm taking away is that we're, we're building a lot of capacity to drive change. And um, I think that's awesome. It seems, I know that YCA has alumni of 50 some odd who've been through the program. I think uh, probably Woodside High School sophomores from a few years ago are now seniors and have more capacity than they had two years ago. And I guess, um, you know, my along the same theme and the title of one of your slides, Zoe, collective impact. And I also like the, um, the, the 10 icons on the previous slide, were, which were from One Planet Living, which um, I could do a whole, whole uh, seminar on or, or discussion on that, which is collective impact. But if we were to um, use this more collective impact approach and we were to pick an area, I guess, um, you know, if we were to pick a topic, let's say it's, it's single use plastic, what would we focus on with geography, what target audience, what would our ask be, what, how would we execute? Um, 
these are all really big questions, but um, as I've looked at what other organizations have done, including the one that, that sponsors One Planet Living, which is bioregional in London, and looked at what other um, leaders in other countries are doing, I do think they take this approach. They pick, they pick a big topic, they set a huge goal, and they focus on um, where, the where, the who, the what, and the how, which is on the right side. So I'll throw that out there in the breakout room, which we have you know, nine minutes or so. You can ask questions. This will be random again. You can ask questions of any uh, one in the room. And then if you want, you can talk about um, this collective impact and what we would focus on, and then the, the where, the who, the what, and the how. So I'm gonna do these breakout rooms. Open, oh, I guess I can go recreate. I'm gonna recreate three rooms. There we go. Open all rooms. Larry, you're not in a room. There you are. There we go. Clearly, I'm not good at closing breakout rooms in less than 60 seconds, <laughs> but I know there's some setting I could change. I'm... Yeah, there's a timer thing. I look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Preferences. 15 seconds is pretty good. I found. Yeah. Okay. The gear, yeah, it's the little gear thing that's at the bottom of um, your breakout room list. Okay. Which. Um, um, sorry. Which I don't have... the, that's a, it's very no, unfortunate anyway. that we've learned that. Yeah, but, no, so anyway, so, thir so really? in, in eight, 19 seconds, I do think our leaders could, could be better. Um, what can I say? Okay. We had some um, great discussions in our room. I hope you had some great ones in yours too. Yeah, uh, Petra, you wanna wrap it up for us and let everyone know, remind everyone about June 10th? Sure. So again, great discussions, great presentations. Totally appreciate all of you. I hope that you continue to attend uh, these meetings because it's the connections that are really going to make us a much more powerful voice. Um, so please continue with that. And on June 10th, we are going to have our final, final uh, thing with Doug and we're going to have a farewell hike. It will be in person. Um, if you're not vaccinated, please wear a mask. And this is really about celebrating all of the hard work that Doug has put into this and making more connections. So please come, invite your friends, and um, we will see you then. And then after that, we'll have a next event in July. So thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you for, to all the terrific speakers for all the great work you're doing. Thanks, everyone. And thanks Thank to you. Doug. Thank you.